For anyone getting started with Home Assistant, when to use a script, a scene, or an automation can be confusing. So in this video, I want to break down the differences between the three. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. What's up everyone, my name is Jeff and this is Slacker Labs where we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using Home Assistant and Smart Home Tech. If you're into Home Assistant or just automating stuff, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. And if you're here because you've already subscribed, I really appreciate the support. I'm not sure I've seen any clear guidance from Home Assistant on when to use an automation script or scene in our setups. So in my five years of using Home Assistant, I've developed my own automator code for deciding when to use them. Although the code is more guidelines than actual rules. In any case, let's break these three down. If you really want to simplify your Home Assistant learning curve, you could do almost everything with an automation. And the built-in automation panel makes building automations in the UI pretty easy. If you want to avoid the automation learning curve altogether, Home Assistant recently announced Blueprints, which give you the ability to download automations that other people have built and then can be easily customized for your environment. Although the handful of blueprints I've seen already feel overly complex for something that could be easily whipped up in the UI. Let me know in the comments if you found any blueprints that you think are useful. But for now, let's pretend you want to learn about automations. Automations have three main parts. Triggers, which define when an automation should fire. Conditions, which are optional and define if an automation should fire and actions, which are the meat of the automations and where you put everything that you want the automation to do when it runs. Triggers and conditions might be confusing because they're very similar, but triggers are focused on the state change of an entity, whereas conditions are focused on the current state of an entity. And since these happen in sequence, you could use a condition to verify that the switch that just triggered the automation to fire is actually on. And in the actions, you can call scenes, scripts, or even trigger other automations. Here's a simple automation that I use to let my son know it's time for bed. The trigger is based on an input date time. There's a condition to make sure that we're not on vacation. And then it executes a scene to change the color of the lights in his room. Some other pieces here are the ID, which needs to be unique. I've heard that it's best to use a GUID or GUID like this and alias, which is the friendly name that you see in the Home Assistant front end. Automations seem to have a clear use case. Obvious examples of automations are doing something when people arrive home or doing something when someone flips on a switch. But they can also include what to do if the state doesn't change for an entity over a period of time, like notifying you that you've left a door open for more than a minute. Or they can look for an event in the logbook, like NFC tag was just scanned. Automations have the most flexibility because they can pretty much do anything you need them to do and they have a built-in trigger. In my view, it's always good to start with an automation and then just augment that automation with scenes and scripts if your use case expands. Scripts are simply a series of actions that get executed in sequence. In past, I've compared them to a routine you would set up in your Amazon voice assistant. Scripts differ from automations in that they don't include a built-in trigger. They require an automation or direct interaction in Home Assistant or even something outside of Home Assistant calling the script in order to fire. Scripts can contain conditions, just like automations, that if they're true, allows the script to continue. And you can leverage the choose action, just like you can in the automation, to define complex decision logic. Layout-wise, they look like this, with the important piece, outside of having a unique name, being this sequence line. If you leave this out, Home Assistant will get mad at you. I believe it can be omitted if you have just one action, but I always include it just to avoid being shamed in the log. When this script is called, it checks to see if any of the doors in the garage door group are open, and then the script driveway on is turned on. That script in turn checks to make sure that the sun is below the horizon, and then turns on the lights if it is. This is separated into two scripts because there are times I just want the driveway lights on before the doors are opened. My basic rule of thumb for when to use a script is whether I want the series of actions to be used in multiple automations or to be called from something outside of Home Assistant, like my voice assistant. Instead of duplicating that series of actions in multiple automations or other places, I just create one script and then anywhere I want to use those actions, just reference the script. However, recently, the dividing line has been more around whether or not I wanted to use parameters in my scripts to make things a little more dynamic. 
but ultimately, I think the script use case comes down to how you want people primarily interacting with your house. If voice is going to be the primary interaction, then I think it's better to build everything in scripts and then just link those scripts in your voice assistant. But if you're planning on using wall panels or switches in addition to your voice, it might be good to use a combination of automations and scripts to make that happen. Scripts are pretty versatile and they can call scenes or other scripts. And that brings us to scenes, which of the three is probably the one I understand the use case the least. Scenes are pretty limited compared to the previous two. There's no triggers, no conditions, and you can't call other scripts. Scenes are really only able to set the state of entities, which is pretty good if you're trying to change the color of your lights. Here's an example of a scene. You will need an ID, which should probably be a GUID or GUID, like in the automation, but it should at least be unique. And a name, which is how it will be referred to in the UI. In order to make things easier, I use groups a lot in my scenes so that if there's entity changes, which still happen quite a bit in my setup, I just have to update the group definition and then my scenes are updated too. But in a scene, you just list your entities that you want to change and then beneath that, the different states. But honestly, you could replace all of these scenes with a script and it could be a lot more flexible. That said, I still have quite a few scenes in my setup and I primarily use them to set the color of my bulbs so that I don't have to remember the RGB numbers for every color that I want to use. If you have a good use case for scenes, let me know in the comments. And that's it for this video. Press that like button if you found this video useful. Consider subscribing to my channel for more home automation content if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.